While the story of the four flooded and lost towns of the Quabbin are at the heart of its history, there are other surviving small towns surrounding the watershed where life has continued over the centuries. With the creation of the reservoir and, owing to their higher elevations, the towns of Petersham and New Salem both absorbed areas that remained of the lost towns. In fact, for Petersham, that meant all of what had once been the town of Dana. Not that it seemed to change things here much, least of all here. Thank you. Well, I think it's a fairly traditional New England country store in that it does many different things. We're a grocery store, we're a cafe, we do beer and wine, we're a bakery, you know, classic country store. Ari Puglisi, who, along with his wife Janine, runs the Petersham Country Store, could also point out it's among the oldest surviving store of its kind in America. It opened in 1840, and while modern additions are certainly evident, so are the endearing creeks and wrinkles of 180 years. This is the original this floor. This is the original. Yeah, so we're 1840. talking about 200 years old? Yeah, yeah. Yet all of this history might have been lost. The store closed in 2012, but the entire community came together, raised money, and with the collaboration of the East Quabbin Land Trust, it reopened in 2013. For Puglesi, who grew up here and frequented the store as a kid, it was irresistible to leave a career in the fine dining end of food behind and take over the store. One of my favorite things about food is basically bringing people together, which is what country stores are all about. That's never been more true or important than now during the COVID crisis. People have felt more comfortable coming to small places. This is a place where at least they can come in and see somebody and talk to somebody. It's a similar sense of things in the neighboring town of New Salem. Rich with its own nearly 270-year history, it also embraces its own little survivor of a general store. We just feel like it's kind of the soul of the town. And it's just so community, and that's what we love about it. Natalie Reynolds grew up in town. She and husband Jeff had run a main B&B before buying the store this past year during a pandemic. It was really difficult decision at that time. Are we doing the right thing? And I said, you know what? This is our chance to give back. Being open helps this community. And I said, let's just do it. They did it and they do it all here. Jeff's own hats include co-owner, sandwich maker, and postmaster. Fortunately, the post office is only a short commute for him. People still come in every day to get their mail, and people that come from out of town see them and they think it's, you know, just a display, and then they realize that, oh my goodness, that's a real thing, that's a, you're actually a post office. And on the menu, even an homage to the four lost towns. Is there a favorite? Is one most popular? Oh man, that's a tough one, <laughs> but I'm going to have to say the Prescott. The Prescott. Prescott, after the most rural town in the Quabbin. Lost, but clearly not forgotten. Thank you. Have a good one. Just down the road from the store, we dropped in on an old friend and former colleague. 39 years ago, David Skillicorn was with Chronicle at the start as a producer, editor, and videographer. For me, back in those days, the creative process, all of it was very creative. I loved it. For David, the creativity is as strong as ever, but the medium has changed. For the past 15 years or so, he's been finding a new career and commercial success as an abstract painter. I'm not looking at a motif out in nature and then trying to abstract it. I'm really creating something that comes out of me and trying to be as open as possible to not get in the way and just let that happen. With no formal training, David's interest in painting actually began on a Chronicle story, watching an artist work on Cape Cod. My very first naive thought was like, I could do that. My next thought was, I'm going to do that. And so a month later, I was out with another painter from that shoot, and I bought a little paint set and a little easel and stuff. And I set up kind of next to her, and I'm gripping this brush. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't commit. I had no idea how to do it. A couple of decades and a bunch of gallery showings, installations, and exhibits later, he certainly seems to know what he's doing now. When I paint now, I don't even think about it. All of that stuff is sort of automatic, like breathing. He does feel like his earlier work for Chronicle has informed his work as a painter. How could it not? I looked at the world very carefully through that lens for decades. That automatically translates. In what way do you feel like this area has influenced you as an artist? It's quiet, it's slow, it's neighborly. Five minutes from my door, you can come out to a spectacular sweeping vista of the whole Quabbin. So all of these 
visuals, how could they not come out in some ways in the art? And I think they do. And you can see some of David Skillicorn's work locally at the Chase Young Gallery in Boston's SOA District. Many more images of his work are on his website, which you can link to from ours. And while David loved working for Chronicle, he does admit he doesn't miss his nearly three hour round trip commute from New Salem to our station in Needham. Next, Serenity in the Snow.